The following program is brought to you by Caltech. You know, this is to 1987, but this is actually only to 1986, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, but I arrived at Caltech in the, the fall of 1979. Very exciting time. I came from the University of Utah. Um, I had been introduced to Ivan Sutherland, um, and so I came here to work with, with him, actually. Um, just to give some context of what was happening, um, there was a great scientific American magazine, the entire one, um, that had Carver and Ivan talking to the little guys. I, I mean, this was really, what does VLSI look like for, for everybody? There was an article by Alan Kane, by Bob Noyce, and by Ivan and Carver. This article really talked about their vision of what the, the first attempt at a computer science department would look like at Caltech. There's a second attempt more recently, but this was the first attempt. Um, and so that's what, what I walked into. Um, when I arrived, I was told in no uncertain terms that the first thing I needed to do was to take the VLSI course. And, Doug Fairbairn, who's here today, taught that course. Um, and as I was really more familiar with software, and he informed me that the hardest part for somebody like myself to figure out is what kind of chip you would build. And that was true. I think I did a content addressable memory. Um, but what I didn't know was that this was really the end of a period of time where Doug and Dick and Carver and Lynn Conway and many others had been teaching this course all over the country. And that, that they really, there was this excitement about what was possible for VLSI. The net result for me as a graduate student was that all these really interesting people were stopping by. The founders of Sun came here before there was even a Sun people from Xerox PARC. Um, Dave Johansson mentioned um, the VC, John Doerr. There was just a lot of really interesting people. And for somebody with entrepreneurial tendencies, this idea and this excitement about what you could <coughs> do with this really cool technology was really what was, what was the driving force for me. So Ivan and Carver, had this idea that they wanted industry to understand what we were doing here. It brought in money, but they also brought in a lot of people from industry. Intel, Digital Equipment Corporation, back when there was a Digital Equipment Corporation. Um, all these people spent a year here, and they did some interesting projects. Um, for me, as a new graduate student, this once again, it, it expanded my vision because through the Silicon Structures Project, it, there's Carver at a Silicon Structures Project party. Um, we had all kinds of students that came together. And these were not just Carver students. These were students throughout the computer science department. Because at least in those early years, we really thought of ourselves as a computer science department. We all were working together. There was also many faculty. Um, so others are um, very young. Jim Kajia. Hi, Jim. Um, and, um, but also people from industry who came here for a year to, to work with the great minds, Carver, others, um, and take that back. And so it really is these breadcrumbs that were being flung throughout the country, if not the world, of ideas that came from this idea of, of the OSI. And that's what was happening. You know, what I, know now um, and didn't really fully understand then was um, how lucky we, uh, I was to work with Carver. Because even though I came to work with Ivan, he proceeded to leave a year after I left. And I got here and, and I had the honor to start working with Carver. Um, he always made time. So he was world famous at this point. And yet he came. He'd sit down with me. He'd sit down with all the other students, and we would talk about what was going on. 
he didn't invite us to dinners. I mean, I got to meet some of the most interesting people. There, there was a lot of very interesting ideas at this time. And he paid, he paid for, if I had a paper accepted, he paid for me to travel, you know, Edinburgh, nice place to go. Norway, okay. Um, you know, this, it was, it was just, it was pushing my own personal limits of what was possible. Um, very exciting time. So, uh, so what was my thesis topic? I, the work that, and Carver came in one day as he was off to do, he would come in and say, I have this idea. And he had this idea of what he called Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Um, it was a circuit level representation. And as Dave talked about, there was a lot of work at this particular point in time about des correct design, correct by construction. So we had a transistor level design that had both the circuit as well as the topology, as well as the mass geometry. And the unique thing about this particular correct by construction was the fact that it used circles, which actually mapped pretty well into the silicon. Um, the silicon structures projects, based to a large extent on Dave's work, created a next generation silicon compiler and used Poo and um, this, this language as the underlying infrastructure for a data path generator, a pad generator, and some of the things that these folks then took back to their companies. And so, once again, you're spreading the vision to lots of different places. And with um, an indication of things to come, this is a composition of cells. This is a wiring diagram for, um, for the retina. Not, not too many circuits here, but the wiring diagram. Um, this, this also came from my thesis. But what I also didn't realize was that this was the tail end of what was happening with the VLSI work. A few years after I got here, Carver called a meeting of all of his graduate students. And he said, um, Things are changing. And he asked for a commitment. He wanted us to commit to the work, commit to the science. And what and this, I think it was 83, um, it was about the time that Marina was re ready to graduate. SSP was on its way out the door, which was, I didn't know at the time, but that's when he created his lab. He was asking for us to make a commitment to a different future, and he created the lab. If you look at the students who were here during this period of time, it was less about a group working together and more a collection of people that had interesting ideas. And in hindsight, I think that Carver was starting to think, OK, what is next? Um, certainly, my work on the hierarchical composition of the LSI circuits was the representation Included within this era, I would say, is Marina Chen, who did some theoretical work on space-time algorithms. And, um, and once again, you can see this theme of representations that's, that went to a lot of these theses at the time. Zumu Lin, who I thought was going to be here, but he and I graduated the same year, and he did a timing simulator. Once again, a wonderful representation for timing, and that's Carver and Zumu and I on our graduation. John Tanner, who really had done a lot of work with VLSI, but his actual thesis was really part of the next era, but was really, he, he, he was part of our group in terms of looking at interesting architectures during this period of time. And then John Worsnick, um, a, very, a very young John Worsnick. <laughs> um, we, he and Carver were quite interested in looking at music and music, generating music using this great new VLSI technology. And Lynette Dyer, who in fact graduated a number of years later, but was really part of this era. Um, Lynette is now serves on the board of trustees of Caltech and is here today. So 
these folks were coming together. Each of them had their own relationship with Carver. Each of us had the chance to work on some very interesting representation. But it was also a time of change. My last few years, I actually, my office was in the lab, the CNS lab. Um, so I had a chance to, to talk to Misa and Dick Lyon and others as they were looking at these brand new analog circuits um, and to pay attention to some of this interesting work. And you can just see, you can just see the, the change that was on the horizon. Um, Carver was an incredible advisor. You know, he supported me in, as I mentioned, ways that I didn't even realize was unusual. There weren't many women around here when I joined here. Um, it was about 14% at Caltech overall. He also supported me when I had some interesting behaviors that we had to report. <laughs> you take a bunch of people who do are not very used to even being around women. Um, it can ha it can um, it can it was an interesting place. Um, you notice that I head up a nonprofit now about bringing more women into technology, and some of the roots start here. Today, Caltech has almost forty percent women, so it's a very different place. I was walking around campus today, and um, it's just very integrated in lots of different ways. But Carver was always focused on the science. He once told me that there's something very magical that happens that last year between a, an advisor and the student as they get deep into their, their topic. And I remember that last year before I graduated and the many t nights that I would talk to Carver and he would come in and it was so exciting I saw that work with many of the other students that he was working with at the time, especially in the CNS lab. There was a real passion. Um, I feel very grateful. I feel very grateful to have had the chance to work here and to work with you. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dylan. Thank